So this is the 2014 Leading Cert Higher Level Paper 2 and we're looking at question number one. The lengths of the sides of a flat triangle field, triangular field, ACB are AB which is 120, AB 120, BC is 134, and AC is 150. Part A1 says find the size of the angle CBA. So the size of the angle CBA, that's this angle here, C to B to A. So we're looking for this and we have to give our answer in degrees correct to two decimal places. Okay, so what I have is a non-right angled triangle. I'm given the three sides and I'm looking for an angle. So if it's non-right angled, I'm thinking sine rule or cosine rule. And if I'm given three sides and looking for the angle, that directs me to the cosine rule here. So that's where I'm at, is I'm using this cosine rule, where, which I've taken from the tables book. So what I'm gonna do is uh, match up my sides, first of all. So if I'm looking for this angle here, opposite, uh, opposite the 150, I'm gonna act as if this, if we look at the cosine rule here, small a squared would be opposite capital A. So I'm going to pretend this is capital A and that this is uh, small a. So this here will match the small a, which is this one. Then I'm going to have C, which will be this one here. That's going to go there and in there. And I'm also going to have this side over here, which will be my small b, which will be that one, which goes here and indeed there in the formula. And that way I'm going to figure out, um, I'm going to figure out capital A, the angle. So for me, that's going to be B. So the angle I'm looking for, the big angle, A will be this angle here. So here we go. I'm going to set up the cosine rule which says that a squared, 150 squared, is equal to b squared, which is 134 squared, plus c squared, 120 squared, minus twice bc, minus twice the blue by the green, by the cosine of the angle we're after, which for us is uh, I'm going to call it angle B. Okay, so if we rearrange this a bit, we can take if we take this over here, it becomes positive. If we take this over here, it becomes negative. So that'll become negative. This will become positive. So that will leave me with twice 134 by 120 by the cos of b equals to 134 squared plus 120 squared minus 150 squared. And then if I divide both sides by 2 times 134 times 120, so 2 by 134 by 120, if I do that to both sides, they cancel on the left. You can see here these divide into each other once. So that leaves me with just cosine B is equal to all of this. So that means that B is the inverse cos Press shift cost in your calculator of all of this here 134 squared plus 120 squared minus 150 squared all over 2 by 134 by 120. And notice the way I'm not working anything out uh, on my calculator just yet you're really wasting time if you start working out bits and pieces of this in your calculator 
before the end you're, you're kind of just wasting time so I can just put all of that now into the calculator and the answer I get when I put all of this here into my calculator I get an answer of and remember it's correct to two decimal places so correct to two decimal places my angle B is 72.15 degrees that's after we round it so that's the end of part day one. Part two says find the area of the triangle ACB correct to the nearest whole number. Okay, well, we have another formula here from the tables book which says that the area is equal to half AB by the sine of the angle C. In other words, half the multiplication of two sides by the sine of the angle that's between those two sides. So the fact that I know the angle B now is 72.15, I can use 120 and 134 as the sides that make this angle here. So I can use that in the formula. So that's going to give me the area equal to a half the two sides, which is going to be uh, 120 or 134 by the sine of the angle between those. So the sine of 72.15, I can use the rounded angle, that's degrees. And when I put this in the calculator, that gives me 7652.97. Okay, but then it did say to the nearest whole number, so to the nearest whole number then, that is 7653. I look at the digit after the decimal and that knocks the two up to a three. So there we go. And my units, don't forget its area, so the units is meters squared. Okay, part B. A vertical mast, DE, is fixed at the circumcenter D. So here's the mast. D, E, and the circumcenter D of the triangle. The mast is held in place by three taut cables. Taut means uh, tight, they're not loose. Uh, e, A, E, B, and E, C. So they're the broken lines here. E, A, E, B, and E, C. Explain why the three cables are equal in length. Okay, well, if the... Just change the color here. If D is the circumcenter, that means from this point, if I draw a circle around this triangle with DC as radius, in other words, D to C, if I draw a circle from here, it will touch the other points perfectly and make a perfect circle around. That's what the orthocenter is. So in other words, these blue lines that I'm drawing, DC, DB, and DA, are all the same length. That's what it means if the orthocenter is at D. So those blue lines are all the same length. And if those blue lines are all the same length, and the mast, DE, it makes a triangle with each of those blue lines. So if you can imagine the triangle ADE, the triangle CDE and the triangle BDE. Those three triangles all have two sides the same and they all have a right angle between those two sides. So each triangle EAD, EBD, and ECD. Each of those triangles has a right angle. Uh, 
I'm saying each of those has a right angle, has the side ED, and also has sides equal. Uh, the length AD equals the length CD equals the length BD. That's given by the orthocenter fact, or the circumcenter fact, rather. So, in each of these triangles, what we have is we have side angle side. So that gives side angle side. So we can say then, therefore, the triangles are congruent. Congruent means identical in terms of the size of the angles and the size of the sides. So you can prove congruency by side angle side. That's one of the ways you can do it. So if the triangles are congruent, congruent, you can say that EA, the length of EA, is equal to the length of EB, which is equal to the length of EC, which is what we were asked to explain. So there you go, that's the end of part B and the end of question one.